Turn up the POS dial. It's time for some shitty games. Alright, I'll be honest. When I found Dave Robinson's Supreme Court, I wasn't expecting a basketball game. I probably should have known better since somebody from the 90s would have immediately recognized this game if they watched ESPN all the time. Perhaps it was an early Phoenix Wright game or a political game, I don't know, I supposed. I'm not that big on sports games, but I am willing to give them a try, notwithstanding the fact that there are so many of them out there. It's cool that 16-bit sports games tried to be high-tech and offer many options, but this seemingly complicated menu isn't as bad as some of the others I've seen out there. I could get into a game with 20 seconds, but I would have preferred something like a Play Now option. The graphics for a 1992 game are above par, but a few things irk me. You can't see faces. Okay, fine, I accept that. But why do all the cheerleaders in the crowd wear the same colored shirts and have the same huge breasts? Was there a purposefully inserted stereotype, or did the designers follow a deeply embedded societal norm of big breasts? Ah, who gives a f Fingers. What does scare me a little bit is their hair color. It's like carrot top. And when you do score a goal, look at the cheerleaders. They look like they're fapping something with that up and down motion. Speaking of hair color, a lot of people in the audience have neon shirts or hair. They could have been at least a little more creative there. While this is a nitpick, they could have done a better job on synthesizer sounds. Seriously, when you miss the basket, every time you miss the basket, you're greeted with a BOW sound that sounds like a truck backfiring or a T-Rex. Just listen to it. The game is playable, but there's one critical error that makes this a bad game. Every single time you dribble the ball and pass it half court, if the camera changes on you, you have to reverse the buttons you're pressing, otherwise you're gonna end up with a back court violation. That is major PINGERS! I don't care if this game was 16-bit, that's something that should have been addressed before the game was even released. Absolutely disorienting, and my brain takes a couple of seconds to readjust to what the fingers just happened. Other than the critical half-court issue, the game's controls are fairly decent but slightly above par for a 16-bit game. One thing that also chews me off are the free throws. Now the computer's gonna get them every single time you foul them. But you, the player, have to line up the moving hoop with the real hoop just right or you're gonna miss, guaranteed. I guess this is good for player versus player, but not for a FINGERS player versus CPU game. Every which way the game throws fouls at. I understand the developers were trying for a realistic basketball simulator, but I'm looking for an arcade experience when I play sports games. At least have a FINGERS option to turn fouls off or at least limit them. The game ended up in the piece of fingers category because it's bad. However, we need to remind ourselves that there are much, much worse video games out there. The controls seemed solid for this game, the music was great, but fatal flaws and the excessive fouls made it a pain in the fingers to deal with. Until at least NBA Jam came out, that game is not a piece of fingers.